I've just watched the Sakia Grand Prix and I had this great video which I've been working on all day lined up about George Russell's first win or at least his first podium finish in Formula One. And now I'm left with nothing, but I thought, bugger it, I'll just put it up. Let's imagine that he won. So here it is. George Russell will have a smile a mile wide after his very first Formula One win at the Sakia Grand Prix. Good on you, George. But what a shame that his parents weren't there and his extended family. Uh, his mum and dad uh, were in Rutland. His sister, Cara, was with her husband in London. And his brother, Benji, was with his partner and the kids in Leeds. But unfortunately, they couldn't get together because of COVID. But certainly, George will be celebrating tonight with his team and the guys around him who look after him. Now I wanted to get this video up as quick as I could after the race, so I've been filming and editing over the past day. I started last night and videoed myself watching Quali. This is what happened. It's 1am in Perth, I've gone to bed, I've got up, I'm sitting here in front of the television in George's 37th Formula One race thinking, can he do it? Can he put it on pole? Can he go that extra step further? in the race. It's such a thrill to watch this young fella race. He's a beautiful kid. Uh, I've had a little bit to do with him at the track. Uh, not a lot, but I'm um, certainly known to talk to. Always find him to be very polite. You know, there's a heck of a lot that went on behind the scenes this week in order for George to actually get into that car and race at the Sakia Grand Prix. Um, for instance, like, he needs a, a new race suit. They had to organise that. They have to get contracts sorted out. Helmet. Yeah, he needs a new helmet painted because of the fact that He'll have different sponsors on a Mercedes helmet than he will have on a Williams helmet. So um, yeah, he's very obviously lucky to have enough time to get that done and they made it happen pretty, pretty quickly. I put a post up after FP1 and 2 just mentioning the fact that George had done very well and asked people what they thought that meant. And I got some interesting comments. TC Templeton said, it says he beat the second and third best drivers on the grid. Commendable, but not like beating numero uno. And for those of you who don't know much about George's past, he's uh, 22 years of age. He won the 2017 GP3 Championship. He won the 2018 F2 Championship. And then, of course, he got his gig with Williams in 2019 was his first year. And of course, he ended up down the bottom of the field. So we've got 52 seconds to go. And I've got George Russell here. He's in second position. He's going for a red hot lap. This could be the most important minute or so of his life. And it's a very short lap, as you know. Look, I'm excited. I'd love to see him pip Valtteri just for the, the sheer thrill that this would give to this race. Come on, George, come on. Oh! Russell, second, second. That's qualifying over and done with, so I'll go back to bed now. And we'll look forward to something special from George tomorrow. That was filmed yesterday. But today I've been mulling over all the challenges that George has had to overcome to get to this first podium finish. For a start, let's look at the cockpit of the car that he's in. Now this car is designed for Lewis Hamilton. It's tight. Have a look at the difference in height between Lewis and George. Lewis, 174 centimetres. George, 185 centimetres. In fact, there are only two drivers that are taller than George Russell in Formula One. They are Esteban Ocon and Alex Albon. Not only is he taller than Lewis, he has bigger feet. And of course, you're using your left and your right foot down the bottom there with the pedals because your left foot braking, your right foot accelerating. So he needed to have smaller race boots. So he raced with a race boot that was one size smaller than normal, just so he could have that little bit of extra room. Now, I imagine that's like running a marathon in shoes that aren't quite right. There's gotta be a level of pain, or if not pain, certainly inconvenience. He had to change the way he drove, and he only had two days of practice to get it right, which makes his achievement in quali, where he was just a fraction slower than Valtteri, remarkable. And of course, in the race, to do what he did, well, hats off to him. When he lined up on the grid, for the first time in his F1 career, he had no car in front of him. What must that have been like? A clear view ahead to turn one. And what happened? Well, here was my reaction to it. Right, and George is off to a good start. Three and he, oh, it's gonna be neck and neck. George has the inside run. Oh, George is gonna lead into the first corner. Yes, because I backed him to lead at the end of the first lap. Beauty! And Bottas has spun. Oh no, he's not even gonna be second. Oh, he's second at the moment. I've actually, oh, and there's a big stack at the back, but thankfully it's at, at the same spot that uh, Grosjean went off. Suddenly uh, there's a Force India that's come off. There's gonna be a safety car. 
Oh my gosh, George is off to a huge start and Max Verstappen's out. Oh, Leclerc cleans up Stroll. Max goes, what? Oh, such an innocuous crash for Max. Oh my gosh, who's out? Leclerc, Verstappen. My gosh, this has played right into George's hands. My five hour investment editing and shooting today might well pay off. George has now gone back to fifth because of a tire muck up. Oh, that's, that is heartbreaking. With 64 laps of 87 run. He's gonna get him. Don't touch, don't touch. He's got to third. Oh, and he's just got Ocon. Only one to go. He's got to get Perez and he's right on his hammer. Why is he, why is he coming in? He's got a puncture. Oh no, that's it. He's out, he's done. Let's bug it up my video. There's no doubt Mercedes would have been thrilled with his performance today. And you know what? It may end up saving Mercedes-Benz a lot of money. How so? Well, suddenly everybody knows that George can handle that car. And while Lewis is a great driver, perhaps they don't need as great a driver as Lewis in order to beat the field. And certainly when it comes to negotiations, maybe the team then has a little bit more sway when it comes to negotiating a better deal for Mercedes-Benz. And of course, the value of George Russell has gone up big time because he's shown he can handle the pressure and he can certainly drive. Back in my 20s, I used to work on radio. And as a radio announcer, you never wanted to go on holidays just in case the person who filled in for you did a better job, got better ratings, and suddenly you're not as valuable to the station as you thought you were. And that's exactly what might have happened here with Lewis Hamilton. Of course, everybody thinks Lewis is the greatest and he's a brilliant driver, there's no doubt about that. But when Mercedes sees another driver, a younger driver, at a fraction of the cost, come in and perform so well, maybe they think, hey, let's save some money. But of course, Lewis is so much more than a good driver. He brings a lot of value to the team in terms of sponsorship dollars and his persona. Tonight should have been George Russell's first F1 win. Certainly, up until lap 64, I think it was, it was looking exactly that way, and it was gonna be an easy win, but it wasn't to be. Congratulations to Sergio Perez, great drive from him, great result for Esteban Ocon and Lance Stroll too. Remember, you can find all of my pictures at ProStarPicks.com. If you've liked the video, please give it a like, subscribe if you haven't done so. What else? Notifications, yes, get them as well. Join as a member, you'll, oh, you'll find these F1 driver's books at kimelman.com. Maybe you've still got time to get one for Christmas. And for my best picks and stories all through the week, head to Instagram at Kim Illman. It's 4 a.m., I'm going to bed. Thank you for watching and stay passionate. I'm excited. You know, I was